It's your birthday, shout it. On a party on a birthday, she wanna pop a little pilly on a birthday. Shake her ass and make it rain for a birthday. Pop a bottle in the way for a birthday. She wanna pump a little cocoa on a birthday. Pop a pussy on a gig for a birthday. Cause she might kiss a bitch on a birthday. Because she down to do whatever on a birthday. Girl, you say you're down to do whatever, right? We gonna hit the pot the pussy, let me see the night. It's your birthday, shorty, do it your way. Fuck what they think, girl, what they wanna say. If them haters wanna hate, pop a bottle on them. Designer shoes on your feet, just the stump on them. Gucci bag, Gucci shoes, Gucci everything. Got you running up a check to the bank, girl. You're shitting on them, you're flexing on them, you're shining on them. You be twerking on them, you got them other hoes mad that wanna be you. The baddest bitch, hands down, they need to clone you. Shake something, twerk something, just a little bit. Pop something, drink something, do what you like. It's your birthday, you already know what you just experienced here. If you don't know, now you know. We got C Murph, Jezebel. We rocking with C Murph. Uh, that's not C Murder. That's C Murph. I didn't say Smurf. We talking about C Murph. That Jezebel. We've been. It's, I've been. I've been seeing Jezebel rocking a lot on Instagram. Yeah, we got a nice little bass, man. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, people, people definitely enjoy his music. I enjoy his music. Um, he, he on Spotify. He on everything else too, right? I believe so. Absolutely. All streaming services. Make sure to check out C Murph. You got his Instagram handle. Uh, let me make sure. I tell y'all. Like official C Murph or something like that. Yeah. Like let me make sure. Like I'm gonna that. give it to y'all lie. proper. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Official C Murph all together. No no spaces, no underscores, no funny shit. Official C Murph. That's M as in Mary, U R P as in Paul H. You can tell somebody works in a call center. <laughs> and that's the letter C, not nothing else. Just the <laughs> yeah, you got to drop it properly. C as in cat. <laughs> You here with the Velvet Vibes, Pimcast. Uh, first off, in the absence of Lenopoly, go ahead and give her that air horn. <laughs> you know, the cooking with grease, not just regular grease, but on a front burner type grease. Yeah, Crisco. You know, Crisco. <sighs> you know how we're cooking. Not to mention, gotta introduce myself. Oh, before we got somebody else that's missing today, the Scorpion King. Get over here! Scorpion. Drop a little get over here for you. Uh, finish him. <laughs> But you here with the motherfucking velvet juggernaut. Yeah. You know what's the motherfucking yep. And we got somebody here. You already know how we do it with the wild child. Wild child. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I'm ready for this shit to be. Let's go. Let's get it. Oh, we definitely finna be cooking with grease. Hold on, it's kind of funny. Is there is there only you two guys here? No, motherfucker. What you thought this was, bitch. We got somebody here. We got some bodies here. We've got the good old introduce yourself. Whoever wants to go first. Go ahead. First of all, I want to go. Why the hell they call you Jezebel? No, no, no. no. I was confused, bro. I was like, did they just call that nigga Jezebel? Wait a minute, what's happening? And then wait, and then he said, he said something else, and then he started talking again. Nigga, do you have different personalities? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gemini, so how that goes. Wait a minute, wait a minute, nigga. What's good? It's D. Anthony Singh, aka David Singh, man. What's going on, Sam? How y'all feeling about? Ah, but it's kind of funny. I noticed you said you got some. Uh, Bodies in the building. Who else is in this motherfucker? Yeah, Let's go ahead and learn something. I'm already in that type of feeling. Like I'm about to learn something. Okay. Uh, first off, I do want to let you know that when you hear the word rich off the net, it's not just a fun handle on Instagram. It actually happened. When you hear D. Anthony sing, it's not because he's singing. He's just singing when he's cashing checks. <laughs> 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 
So let's talk about it, man. Yes, I, th- for all y'all listeners, this is a time that it's a little different than other times. Yeah, sometimes I sit here and I run my motherfucking mouth. But as y'all about to sit here and learn, I might have a notepad myself because it's time for me to learn some shit. But first off, uh, first, I want both of y'all to tell me about yourself. I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Singh. T- tell me something. You no. Know- First of all, you know, I I, I I enjoy the podcast. I got to make sure I, you know, the accolades what they do. Um, hey. Uh, y'all boys doing y'all thing, man. But you know, I when I when when you know we talked about doing this cast, I really wanted to give people a different perspective on life. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, you know, out there sit at home and they like, oh like, oh we all have been there and said, you know what, what could I do different? Like you know, it's 2018, it's going to be my year. 2019, is going to be my year. New year, new me. All the bullshit that everybody always say. Like, yeah, you know, we always want to be. But I think I think in doing this, I, I just wanted to give people a real insight. Because, you know, as as business owners, as entrepreneurs, as, as, as African-American men in general, you know, we don't get... Uh, the platforms we usually get are negative. Right? And, or, or, or if we do get a platform... We talking about killing, drugs, sex, women, this, right, that, blah, blah, blah. But it's all negative stuff. It ain't, it's, it's, it's never a situation where, you know, we can sit here and actually drop knowledge. Right. And, 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 and drop knowledge to say, you know what? No matter what the situation is, I come from a different place where he come from. Right. Just like I come from a place where you come from. I come, you know, we all experience different things. But at, at, at the end of the day, we all experience the same thing. We all experience some bullshit. We all experience discrimination. We all experience... Yeah. You know, pride, y'all experience just us fucking up. I mean, because mm. sometimes, guess what? It was us. Like, yeah. hey, y'all, we fucked up. But true. sometimes, you know, if I would have knew what I know now back then, yeah. and we all said that, like, damn, if I can just go back. Like, yeah. at, least, at least I wanted to be able to say, you know what? I was on a platform and I changed and, 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 and did something positive. So um, for me, D. Anthony Singh, you know, I, 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 I grew up, uh, I went to Madison High School. Right. Um, you know, my family is well known in San Antonio. We come from church world. We come from everywhere. That's right. But where your family comes from doesn't make you who you are. Just because mm. my, my grandpa was a successful, a successful bishop, you know, just because my other grandpa was a basketball player, right. just because my parents were, you know, have masters, doctors, different things, that that didn't give me that didn't give me one path or the other. It didn't give me a path to be on the right side to give me a path to be on the negative side it, mm-hmm. it just gave me a path you know what hey they 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 took me to 18 yeah. and from 18 it was that's it what you gonna do mm-hmm. that's up to you you know what I'm saying so what it, yeah. for me I was like you know what like yeah let's do this podcast because I really want to affect change and not just affect change but teach people that y'all your destiny really is in your hands if you change your mindset and so you know, a little bit about me I like I said I went to Madison uh, I Lived all over the place when I was young. I started uh, in Texas. I left, went to Arizona, came back. Texas, graduated here, went to the University of Wisconsin, went and traveled overseas, did some stuff. Uh, came back and I started investing. But, you know, a lot of people have always seen success. They've always seen, you know, Dave coming out, got the new range, got the new Maserati, got the new yeah. S-Class, got the new Benz, got, you know, whatever. But they, they didn't see the pain that it took to get there. They didn't see... What it, what, what it, what, what I had to sacrifice right. to live up to the image that y'all saw. Mm-hmm. It was, but, but, but the image that y'all saw, y'all didn't know if I had two dollars in my pocket or if I had ten grand because, because the way I carried myself, it was always going to be that I had ten grand in my pocket. If that makes right. sense. No. And so, so for me, you know, it, 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 it was a mindset I created. I, I'm going to live up to the expectation that they expect me to be. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't yeah. living for myself, and that was wrong because. At the end of the day, I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. It's been times where I ain't had no money, and I was like, "Yo, oh, like I'm good." And it's been times where I had ten thousand, twenty thousand, hundred thousand, two million dollars in my pocket. And I'm depressed as shit, sitting in the bed like, oh, mm-hmm. "I got to keep living." Because yes. I got a daughter, because I got this, because I got that. So it was, and, and, and again, my mindset was for the living other people. My mindset was, you know what, Doc, I'm gonna keep going because guess what? Friday coming, and they expect me to be there. They right. expect me to go buy 10 bottles in the club. They expect me to pull up with 10 bad bitches. They expect me to mm-hmm. do all these things that they expect me to do. But in actuality, I was putting myself in a hole. Like, yo, am I happy? Am yeah. I happy? Like, 
Like, I go home, and it was like, yo, it was, it was like, damn, I'm still alone. Hoes be everywhere. It was 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. 10.30, turn up, pregame, yeah. Maserati, Humber Limbos, Humbers, all that. Mm -hmm. By 2.30, you looking around, um, I yeah. gotta go. It's it's they got dick appointments and shit. Like, oh, wait, wait. I got you drunk. Though. What you mean? Yeah. Like, no, I gotta go with my friend. Like, mm -hmm. that nigga chipping, you know, like, but I'm gonna come through. So, how that nigga wasn't chipping at 10 30? You know, right. like, it, 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 you know, for me, it was crazy. It was Hold crazy. on. Something just fell out the air. I think it's called a bum. <laughs> It was like uh, it be it be the it be the women or the men that look like raccoons that leave niggas and bitches to the woods. Yeah, Boosie that was a real ass quote. I'm like, huh? Boosie said that because and, and, and it really made me think that you know we all think backwards. We 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 and even myself when I say we, I include myself because of course I hold myself higher than anybody. I hold myself to a higher standard. So for me, I was like, man. The next time, because see, for me, I, and, 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 and I'm really going to write a book about this. I was going to write a book called Landing on, Always Landing on Your Feet. Mm -hmm. For me, I always got to the top and then like I bullshit it because I got comfortable and then I kind of went down. I get back to the top and then I bullshit and I go back in. And I get back to the top again. Uh, hold on, hold on. With all that steam, it sounds like we're going to learn a lot. But I got to hear something from the good old Gary V. <laughs> Because <laughs> so, I, I want some, I want some steam. Right, it was getting too good. Fuck that. Cut that nigga off. Right. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love, we love all shades. <laughs> Talk to me. Yo, so um, you know my name is Gary Roberts. Uh, I'm from San Antonio. Uh, I'm not original, but I've been out here long enough, put in enough work out here long enough. Uh, poured into enough people to say I'm actually from the culture of San Antonio. Uh, I just turned 28. Uh, I've been doing entrepreneurship for probably like five years now, just doing my own thing. Cause I, growing up, I was that kid always like, you know what? I don't want to just be regular. I want to be a wrestler or I want to be an <laughs> astronaut. I want to be a, I want to be anybody that's, that seems like a star. So it's a vision as a kid. I always had it in my mind. I don't want to settle for anything less than greatness or, or, or being something big. So long story short, uh, I came up out here in San Antonio. I didn't have the best life. I didn't have the best background. Uh, I was pretty much that kid that uh, allowed money. To, to point me down the wrong paths. Uh, I originally came out here for sports, but money, you know, the thing is, you know, when you grow up in a, a single mother home, you know, you, you become the man of the house so early. Mm -hmm. And when you become the man of the house, you know, you got to have money. It, it, it hurts seeing my mom do two jobs. Right. Come home from work. Where you were born at originally? Well, I'm from Maryland. Maryland. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I stayed out there uh, till I was like 10. Or 12 or something like that. 10, 10 11, 12. Mm -hmm. uh, came out here and for football, really, you know, because up there, they really on basketball. Mm -hmm. And everybody, I was a running back. You know what okay. I'm saying? So everybody kept saying, come to, come to Texas, come to Texas. You know, they, they real big on football. So I came out here, uh, and real quick, I just got back to my old ways. Uh, and start hanging around the wrong crowd. Got really deep into the mix out here. Mm -hmm. um, by the time I got to a teenager, I was just all the way deep in. You know, okay. I was, that's what I was doing uh, from 13 all the way to 18 years old. And I always been the one like, you know what? I just don't want to live regular. I don't want to settle for nothing regular. I don't care what it is. I don't care what I got to do to live a, a non-regular life. I'm going to do it. Uh, even though it put me in the wrong path, man. So I ended up catching like two felonies, uh, mm -hmm. having a daughter, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so around this time, I'm like 18, 17, two felonies, doing the same thing that I got the felonies from. Mm -hmm. I just had a newborn daughter. So I'm right. looking at her every day and I was like, I'm low key a failure to you. Mm -hmm. You know, like what I'm doing, I probably won't even be here for you. Right. So long story short, you know, uh, I pretty much start opening my mindset, like David kind of touched on, like mindset is key into everything. 
And I pretty much just start pouring into my mindset, uh, pretty much washing out all the, all the bad stuff, all the weed, all the liquor, all the, all the hoes, all the, all the, uh, you know, pretty much just all the negativity, trying to wash it out with some positive knowledge. I start reading books. I start opening the books up. I start listening to podcasts and YouTubes of successful people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, my life started to t- change around from there. Uh, pretty much. I just dove all the way into entrepreneurship, really just gave it my all and said, you know what? I got to change my life. I ain't got no choice. I got a probation officer. She's on my ass. She begging for money every week. She's talking about if I don't give her the money, I'm going to jail. So I have no choice but to make this work, uh, for me, for my daughter. So me personally, me rich off the net. A lot of people know me as rich off the net, Gary Roberts, just me as a person. I'm always just a fighter, fighter for success. A fighter for other people's success, always just giving back to the community, trying to give back, not just money, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like the, the strongest thing we can give back at this time and time of age is knowledge. You know, it's a lot of knowledge flowing around and most of it is hidden in books mm. and, and thankful for the internet now. Not all of it is hidden in books. Some of it is on YouTube University now. But the thing is, only so many of us open our eyes in the beginning. Everybody prays to be in the beginning, but when they're actually there, they get afraid of what you got to actually go through to be a leader in the beginning. So I was one of the first people to actually get onto this Internet wave, uh, you know, a long time ago. One of the first millennials to actually jump on the Internet when they was talking about these young kids, 18, 17 year old, making hundred thousands a year mm-hmm. and millions of dollars, that was us. And so for the last six, seven years now, uh, this is what we've been doing full time, traveling all around the world, just showing people what we do, mm-hmm. um, how to get more out of life, how to, how to grow an income, how to run a business, how to be an investor, how to get the credit right, how to get in real estate, how to get in the So, so watch this. So with that being said, because a lot of people want to be a businessman, a lot of people say, I want to get a business. What do you think? What would you say is the the biggest flaw that people do starting a business? They don't take it seriously. Uh, One thing about me. Because air quotes, everybody's a a businessman. Everybody's a businessman. Everybody's a business. Everybody's an entrepreneur. Everybody's an entrepreneur. Everybody's whatever the hell. Right. Everybody got something. Yeah. Everybody, and, and the sad part about it is, is that, and, and it's our culture. Black people don't support black people, for one. The Big second facts. thing is, black people don't support themselves, for two. Big facts. They don't, they don't believe themselves enough to say, you know what, this is going to work. And until you do that, you, you could be successful as you want to be, but if you don't believe in yourself, this shit ain't going to work. And, and it may work. I'm not saying it's going to fail. Mm-hmm. You might work hard enough for it to work, but that doesn't mean it's going to reach the potential that it could reach if you believe Absolutely. in yourself. Absolutely. One thing about me is that like I, I, I've i always been in business. I've always been um, rose to the top real quick. You know, been, been a respected businessman since forever. I haven't really worked a nine to five probably since I was like 19 years old or something. And how old are you now? <laughs> I don't want to say. But, uh, <laughs> it, so in other words, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the 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 thing about this is that people will say, and it's so crazy. And, and Gary will touch on this too, because I know this this is one thing that irritates the fuck out of me. And it really that's like his pet peeve. Yeah, somebody comes to us in the club or something, bro. 
I see you, bro. We got to talk business, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <clears throat> it happens all the time. Like, yeah. People are like, yo, we're going we gonna to do this. We're going to do that. We're going we gonna, to we gonna make money, bro. We're going to make money moves. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it just happened the other it's day. It's all a bunch of It's yep. all a bunch of lip service. Yeah. And, you know, I ain't, it happened the other day. This dude comes up to me and him every single week. <laughs> bro, we're going to make money together, bro. We're we going to do this. We're going to do that. We pull up on him like, yo, bro, let's make this money. Let's 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 make so much money that what you're doing right now turns into fun tickets. You know what? I could chime in on that. I, I, I see, because uh, one thing we all see is we all see a bunch of people, like we said, online business. I don't care if you're selling bead necklaces or you're doing something big or whatever, but I do agree that like people don't take it serious or people yeah. don't people don't have the consistency. Like you start this, one moment you're doing this. Now you're doing this. Now you want to do a restaurant. Now you're like, oh, I'm going to sell clothes. Like, it's like you don't have no sense of direction. Dang, so, I you know. Plan. Yeah. Uh, I feel like one of the biggest problems people have with, you know, business is they're comparing it to their job too much. You know, mm. like when you go to your job, you know, like, all right, even though I hate this motherfucker, I got to wake up 8 o'clock. I got to be there. Nine o'clock. I gotta be there till five o'clock. If I do extra hours, that's an extra sixteen dollars, eight dollars an hour, or something like that. Yeah. Right. And he don't even remember how that works. You know, <laughs> you know what, at the end of the week, how much you gonna have? At the end of two weeks, how much you gonna have? In the three weeks, and four weeks, how many hours you're gonna work? You know everything. So when you get in the business, it's the total opposite. And, and your job is work, get paid, work, get paid, work, get paid. In business. It transitions to you worked and you didn't get paid. You worked and you didn't get paid. Like your podcast, when you started your podcast, you hopped on and you spoke for an hour and then you look back and realize on probably only your grandma was on mm-hmm. or it was one listener, two listeners. Mm-hmm. And then you work and didn't get paid. You work, didn't get paid. You work, didn't get any advertisement. Work, didn't get any viewers. So a lot of people, when they get into business, they're looking at it like, oh, well, I just opened up a barber shop. I opened the doors. Nobody people came in, so we're gonna close it. <laughs> yeah, like people should be here. Nobody, op- nobody was here to get their haircut, so we're gonna close it down because this didn't work. So a lot of times, people are just scared to put in that initial work, not realizing the results take way longer to catch up than the work it, does to be put in. So it sounds like people want the instant success yeah, they want and overnight success. You know, yeah. like a lot of people, they'll tell you, congr- like, you know, the crazy part of success is like being pregnant, right? Like <laughs> everybody would tell you, congratulations, congratulations, right. congratulations. But but they really don't know how many times you got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel you. Yeah. It's, like, it's a humorous analogy. But You put in 75 <laughs> hours. The nigga paid you maybe $500 and you made him 20 grand. How does mm-hmm. that even make sense? Exactly. Think about that. No, I mean, I mean, really think, it, yeah. think about that concept for a second. <laughs> People are like, yo, we wanna, we wanna make money instantly. We wanna be because see what messed all of our minds up and it's crazy is like seeing the instant success of like people that like started on YouTube. But like, what they don't see is that the person who made it off YouTube posted like forty five videos before that. You know what? See, well, fifty-five years before that. Besides that, besides yeah, yeah. Tell Soldier, Soldier, Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy made it not because he was a good rapper, because he had a catchy ass song. He made more money off of you than anything else. Soldier Boy ain't living right now because he makes good music. He had one hit song, but they didn't know that Soldier Boy made like forty-five live videos a day before anybody paid attention to him. You know, he was even, he was even, uh, he was one of the first people doing that, like, awesome. uploading stuff on to LimeWire and, Lime and, Wire, and yeah. putting it up as the wrong name. name. He'll put Lil Wayne, uh, whatever the hot song was, 50 Cent in the club. He'll put, he'll put his name as that and you download it. And it was you. And right. then people was like, I don't, this ain't what I was trying to get, but I like it. Right. So, so, <laughs> what I mean, he created a lot of ways. He was like the first blogger, the first person uh putting up like downloadable free music so a lot of people just be sleep you know everybody got a chance to be in the beginning it's just are you gonna look like that idiot you know there's one person always look like the idiot 
and then he ended up being the one at the top because he was the first one to do it. Exactly. But he did it six months prior. Because every, I, yeah. I, I'm a firm believer in one thing that he preaches, and when I say he, I mean Gary, he, yeah. he, he preaches what you're doing now is for six months from now. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we, we were in his garage. And I'm going to tell him this, I don't care if he can imagine. We were in his garage, just bought a Lambo. Yeah. He said, Doc, I bought this Lambo six months ago. Mm. And I, and I, and I heard it, I'm like, he, he not talking about a sheep when he says Lambo. No, just I'm so you know. Lambo, <laughs> wait, we, I got, wait, I got no cap. The sixteen. We ain't buying the five hundred horsepower. It's the sixteen. Anyway, there's another story another day. What I'm saying is, he bought that thing six months ago, and what he meant by that was he was prepping, and he wasn't just prepping. <clears throat> when he wasn't just prepping, he was telling himself, "I'm gonna get this Lambo." Yeah. So it's not just prepping, like yo. Hey, uh, I'm gonna go go put in this step and this step and this step and this step, which is what I call plan, execute, sustain, repeat. We'll talk about it later. But it was a mindset too, so it wasn't just yo. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get it. Yeah. It was you gonna get that Lambo. Mm. He woke up every morning and said, "I'm gonna get that Lambo." Most Man, and, and, and forgive me and forgive me for saying it. I don't care if people get mad. It's be controversial. Most white people. Don't got Lambos. People that got credit. People mm. that got this, got that. He told himself, they're not better than me. Mm-hmm. Six months. And, and, and he said, I'm going to do it in six months and did it. Cash. Cash. At that. It wasn't just, ah, sheesh. Cash. My, my eyes just expanded. Y'all can't <laughs> see, but my eyes because, expanded. Because, like, okay, so he had a tattoo on his arm. And it says, right. you know, the cars and stuff. It, I mean, it was something that he said, everybody saying 16, yo, I'm gonna have a Ferrari, like a, uh, what was that movie? Fresh. Mm. Like, yo, don't even play the Testarossa. Yeah. Yeah. He put that on his arm. As kids, okay, yeah, we said it, but yo, to say in six months, I'm gonna get a Lambo. You know, you know what? Some of you say a while ago, like, I, I've, like, I don't know if you follow academics or on YouTube yeah. or anybody like that. Like, even people like that say the same, same thing that you just said about, like, you don't see what happened prior. Like, I, I saw academics said, you know, you might see all these million views, 100,000 views, 500,000 views or whatever, but you don't know. Was it with me shooting in the gym? It, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. But you don't know how many video, YouTube videos he got. They got three views. Right. When he first was doing it, he was like, oh, I was getting 10 views and yeah, six mean, views. <laughs> people don't give a fuck work you putting in until it works. Yeah, exactly. Like, they don't give a fuck. Like, people, you know, a lot of people quit because they feel like people ain't giving them the respect they need or people not praising them. And really, no one give a fuck till it works. Mm-hmm. No one cares about what you're doing until they have to say congratulations. Like, it's so much in their face. Like, after I caught the Lambo, like so many people started it's talking all awesome to me. At the watch. <laughs> yeah, so many people start talking to me that I've known for four or five years that right. never spoke. Right. And you know what I do for a living. Right. You know I done had success for the last five years, but until you saw that Lambo. Until you saw that Lamborghini on walls. And I just saw the Lamborghini for the walls. And, and that's what's so fucked up with the culture. Like I had this guy tell me, like, oh. You know, I know you've been doing your thing, but when I seen the Lambo, I had I, I had to just believe it against her. And I was like, bro, you gotta understand, like the Lambo is the Let me let me ask you a question yeah, about that. That shouldn't make you a believer. You do, should already have this. Have my period. Let, yeah. So do you, having a Lambo and being in San Antonio, do you feel like not not in a sense of fear because I I we we already know uh, we we, we know we don't do that. We ride down FM seventy eight in that thing sunrise. We didn't. We, <laughs> I, I ride to where I'm from in that right. thing. I'm from go go North down East, the street with from. me, Detroit too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See that's that that's what my question was. Do you ever be? Do you ever feel like I shouldn't take it over here? Nah, we're no. pulling up at four quarters. No, four quarters, lunch, everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere we can go. <laughs> nah, but here's the thing, man. Um, I was, you know, before I was an entrepreneur, man, I was really like thoroughbred. Yeah. You know, so everybody that's out here that's thoroughbred too, they, I mean, they respect my hustle and my come up. Uh, Cause they know exactly what I had to do, exactly. and I was always the younger guy. I would, I'm 28 now. See me, me personally, I would feel like not that I'm afraid of bringing it out, 
because if I'm if I'm around it, I, mean, I already know what's up. But if you go you go somewhere, I get you. Like, you gotta look at it like this. you park it and you go somewhere else. I, so you like I'm from here, right? Yeah. I I didn't. I've never met no one who gonna pull up on me and say, "Yo, this is my business," and I'm pulling up in your hood on the Lambo, and I'm gonna whip out my laptop and put it on. I'll even let you take <laughs> pictures when it is brought around too. Yeah, like it's nobody. So it's all love. It's all love. We not studying on nobody, capping on nobody. It's all like, yeah. Go touch it, yeah. Go hop in the passenger seat, yeah. Go take. The I know you get that it. shit all the time. But I, that's what I got. I got it for the city. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I got that's, it for that's, it. That's, that, that, but that's real talk. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't buy it. Not because he ain't had the money. This is not a money thing. This is this. This episode ain't about money. This is the, the reason why we went on. It's not about money. It's a mindset. Mm. And in order, like. Even if he could have bought the Lambo six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, four years ago, five years ago, didn't. But he had to get people to understand it's a process. He also had to really talk to himself, like, yo, like I don't really want to make a, because because people feel some type of way. Yeah, really, in, in, really, in, in, in all honesty, you work hard, you mm-hmm. work seven days a week, you build a business, you make a million dollars. If you go buy a Bentley or Ferrari or some foreign, mm-hmm. you got to kind of low key, you got to hide it because people going to be hating on you. Like, yo, like who he think he is? Oh, because he because he did this and he did that. And he did that. So it wasn't until and, and, and we can get to it later on the show. Yeah, it wasn't until even me, myself. I know he's an entrepreneur. I know this nigga makes money. I yeah. know it. I yeah. know it. We we we. Had the same mindset. His mindset is farther than mine in entrepreneurship because, like, for me, it took me a minute to see, that, hey, look, you could really do some stuff with what we do. But for for, for, for him, he said, Doc, this, and this is a true ass statement. This is a right handed guy. He said, I bought this name for, for y'all, for you. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, for me, like, okay, cool. I've always had nice cars. Always had foreign, mm. always had money, always had hope. But what did I have to do to get to that? That's the, that's the, that's the, that, that, that's the point. Yeah, I can get to his level. I can go buy a Lambo. I can do all that. But I got to go put in, in all 16 of my businesses, 97 hours. Mm. Woke up, got on YouTube. Made it happen. Type some stuff on the computer, <laughs> went back to sleep probably for 15 hours because I know this nigga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like literally probably worked for like four hours a day if that. I'm, I would just want to say Wild Child's here with a choir robe on because he's getting all this gospel. <laughs> you, 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 you. No, 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 but I mean, but I mean, understand the concept of it. Yeah, I worked 106 hours to get an S class wrapped up in white pearl. It's nice and sexy. He worked. Maybe 20 hours a week. So, so let me ask. <laughs> I, I want to ask. I mean, you got to understand that. It, that's, go ahead. I want to ask both of y'all a question. And whoever want to take it first can take it. So, with with the fact that, okay, we hear, and the, for all the listeners, y'all keep hearing business. Y'all keep hearing entrepreneurship. When people, a lot of people say, and I know y'all hear it more than I do, but everybody hears this. I want to be a businessman. I want to do this. Or people be like, I'm going to be a businessman. And if you be like, what you going to do? Uh, I'm going to start a business. Like, <laughs> what business are you going to start? A job, business. business. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like what, mean, what make you, what gave you the, may help you make the decision of what business? Anybody can wake up and say, I'm going to be a businessman. And then you say, what you going to do? Uh, I'm gonna oh. start. A, I'm gonna start a business, but I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna do a clothing line. I'm gonna uh, I'm sell a jewelry. I'm gonna do gold teeth. <laughs> like what? What's that? To the oil field. What made you say this is the business? Not only am I starting a business, but I already know what I'm finna do. Um, just having an ear, like so. Where I'm from, you gotta have an ear to the streets. Hmm. You can't be selling boo boo and everybody wants the loudest loud, <laughs> right? So when I got into business, I I kept that same mentality. Um, I'm the type of person I want to sell something that's undeniable. I want to knock on your door and say, "Nigga, I got it." And I wish you would say nothing. 
And only way to find that is doing your research and understanding what people want. Um, my job, my first job is to know what somebody wants. And then I'm a solution solver to get them what they want. Uh, so when it comes to business, I always look for services that match anybody's lifestyle. Um, and it's an undeniable type of service to where I can look them in their face and say, nigga, you stupid as shit if you say no. <laughs> type, type, yeah, yeah, yeah. Type of business. And uh, so, I mean, as far as just finding the right business, find something you're just passionate about. Something where, where you really believe in. You really, if it's a... I mean, it's all type of businesses. Cause that's there. a big thing. People just say, I want to do something. It's just like everybody, when they say, if I had a million dollars, I'd do this. And you get it. You, that's, people get a million dollars and die. Right. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, know what I'm saying? People, I feel like, like lately this week, you know, I, so I get a lot of messages. I get probably, I don't know, hundreds and thousands of messages of people, long paragraphs of what they want to be and do and, Mm -hmm. all this stuff and um one thing i recognize just out of people the messages i read and people i talk to is a lot of people don't know what the fuck they want to do not till you give it back they just mm -hmm. don't want to be regular no more right and so for people like that and you're getting into business but you weren't really a never see it's different for some of us some of us came out the womb like yo where the money is like boss baby you're right. Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> but now that we're in 2018, biz, being an entrepreneur is the new rapper. It's the new real. It's the new person with the crack rock. It's the yeah. new person with the wicked jump shot. Yeah. An entrepreneur. So I feel like a lot of times people are getting entrepreneurship for just money because they don't want to be regular. They're not passionate about right. being an entrepreneur. They just want the money. So right. they don't got to go clock in. And if you're like that, you know, I, I, I suggest everybody get into entrepreneurship, sell something, because nowadays if you ain't selling something or don't got a brand, you pretty much don't got shit. Selling so, yourself. pretty much. Yeah, so <laughs> for somebody who's not really into entrepreneurship, like you said earlier, do sell what's hot, sell what the market wants. You know, find a way to capitalize off of what everybody's buying already. Mm -hmm. um, you got to be some demand. Yeah, but sell what's on demand and you can't really fail. So, like, it's different. Like, if you're not really an entrepreneur, stop thinking like, oh, I'm about to come up with some brand spanking new product or service. Because the truth be told, I know people anywhere from 16 to 50 making millions off of selling other people's shit. They don't got no product. They ain't sell, sending out shit. They don't got no company there selling other people's services and other people's products and making a lot of money. So I feel like a lot of people need to just get the hell out their own way and recognize what type of entrepreneur you are. What type of business person are you? Are you a real business business person or you just want to make money so you can live whatever type of lifestyle you're trying to live? Uh if that's that type of person you are, you need to ride the wave then and find a product or a service that's already hot uh, and just run with that thing till you, till you find your own niche. People can make money till they find their own right. niche. You know, don't just sit back and be broke trying to be a category creator. Mm -hmm. You it's know, I think <clears throat> for me, Back when I met him, and even before, you know, I started. I started a long time. There was an entrepreneurship program called Five Links. Okay. And Five Links was just a new way. It was a new thing. It was supposed to make you a whole bunch of money. Right. The only thing I learned from that, I spent two hundred and seventy-five dollars on. Only thing I learned from that was there was a guy on there, and he said his his whole like you know there was a bunch of people that were watching. There was a bunch of people that were talking. Different things, people, trainers, and different things. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Only thing I learned from him, he said, he got on, got on stage. He waited about fifteen minutes, and he said, "Stop getting ready to do five links and do five links." Mm -hmm. That was deep to me because it was like uh, we make excuses, like oh, I'm getting ready to do it, but I need business cards. Oh, I'm getting ready to do it, but I need this. Oh, I was getting ready to do it, but I need capital. Oh, I'm getting ready. But there's things that we could do right now that 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 are free. Exactly. That we ain't taking advantage of. Right. 
that, but that we already do every day. If that makes mm-hmm. sense. Every day we get on Instagram. Yo, kicks of the day. Yo, we got this. <laughs> yo, we got this. We branding ourselves, making these people money because now, guess what? People getting on. Yo, baby vibes. Man, that's the new thing. We getting on. How we get on baby vibes? Baby vibes ain't got a website. Yo, I'm about to get on Facebook and YouTube. Y'all just made them money. Exactly. And, 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 and so it's like, yo. You should be branding yourself. You should just get ready to stop. Stop getting ready to do something and just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not gonna have everything. There's always gonna be something else that you can get. Mm-hmm. Period in business. In business, you could it, it, you? I know people that 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 go out and buy everything they need: mm-hmm. couch, chair, TV, this, that, blah, blah, and they ain't making no money. And I know people that don't have nothing but a but a chair. Making all the money because guess what? They doing it. Whether they got everything or not, they gonna make it happen. And that's the mindset that you gotta change that people don't get. And, 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 and it's and it's crazy because I try to explain to you. I try to say you don't have to have everything. You can you can get to everything that you want by acting like you don't have it. Mm. That's, that's, and that's, and that's, and that's or by you or by benefiting off of the person who do have who do have it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people be in the way like jealousy, not knowing that you the closest person to the person that got it. You you basically got, got it. it, but be on the gram like double off. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you see the stars in the ceiling, nigga. That ain't yours. What you mean? <laughs> But you the closest nigga to him, so you always in so shit. That might not be you. I bet y'all get that so much all the time. Somebody, somebody come by your shit and stunt for they shit. You know, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, this nigga's that, car was trending, <laughs> trending on Instagram. Other folks, I got on like, <laughs> you like that ain't your shit. I'm like, how the hell did Gary's car get up? Wait a minute. Then I looked up. I got my car wrapped. Look, true story. This girl got on, <laughs> got on Snapchat. Yo, look at look at Bay's new biz. I'm looking like, I don't think this bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Straight cabin. Like. Folks come by y'all vehicle. What, and they they, they what, throw some what, Master what, P on and hold it. Right, right, right. What the wrong type shit? But, <laughs> what, what, the, what the problem is that they could have it. Yeah. By doing what they already do. You brand it. You already doing it. You getting online getting likes. Yeah. And, but you getting likes. For them, because they see you as a number. This is a number. Get numbers. And look at this. You get them passenger likes, that's, that's <laughs> and silly. and not the driver likes. That's silly. You know what's <laughs> crazy? The crazy part is that most people don't think they can have that stuff, bro. And that's the fucked up part about it. That's you why know, people if, say, "If I had such," if a- you really sit down and talk to somebody, you'll be surprised at where they cap their life at. We, we call them uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, <laughs> woulda, coulda ass niggas. Yeah. Like, oh, I woulda. <laughs> oh, but oh, but only the rich. I was gonna do it. Oh, but <laughs> I'm black. <laughs> oh, like bro, we in 2018, the internet killed racism. <laughs> no. <laughs> So why do you got to answer to and say, here's my diploma or my certificate? Like yeah, the, the, shit the top richest companies right now, Apple, Amazon, the biggest companies. Dropouts. They said they are no longer accepting diplomas because that, I mean, it don't even matter no more. So people just got to start waking up. People making what other people make going to college, like on regular jobs. No, like, I was I was in the office and this guy was like, yo. He was like, I wouldn't go get a master's unless the company is paying for it. He was like, because I don't use it. It made no sense. And then I've worked with people at places like Walmart or something, and with, with the big old master, and they got the masters, and right. we we right. Walmart, like, like we had fifty an hour, eight hours. We in the meat department. You spent fifty thousand dollars to make twelve fifty a week. Eight years. So I can I can preach on that. Man. Talk to him. So we. We've so, been fooled about. <laughs> yeah, we definitely got all the business talking. I'm just, I'm just a regular old, old triple OG. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big dog. Yeah. yeah I, you trying to get the briefcase too? Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely soaking all this knowledge in from these uh, two amazing young, young sirs around here. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's mind blowing to me. Um, to where I've always told myself that I was destined for something greater, something yeah. different. 
Um, I always wanted to think outside the box, but as they said, I was one of them. Sh- I actually still am one of them. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, that I know that uh, I'm not the speaking the truth. The hustler, the G. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That uh, rich natty is over here. A wise man said, yeah. "Heart of a hustler, yeah. mind of a G. Yeah, Player that. hater, niggas can't fuck with me." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was like, I know I have it in me, but right. it ain't brought out of me. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I know. That's cold. I've been knowing D. Anthony Singh for a minute, and I have seen him switch up his lifestyle numerous of times <laughs> and numerous of years. Yeah. Right? You know right. what I'm saying? So it's it's nothing that I haven't seen. Like I said, it's nothing I ain't been around because I've been around him for a minute. That, that's my nigga, nigga. What, what did he say that? You got to say it twice. Yeah, my nigga, nigga. nigga. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, I've known him from the church years. You know right. what I'm mean? saying? <laughs> So that's that's somebody. So y'all wore choir robes for real. Yeah, we wore choir robes like for real. Yeah, nigga, nigga. So um, (laughs) to just to this here it is now. I've been I've been inquiring. I've been wanting to know. I've been trying to find my itch to scratch. You know that that knickknack. That that what can I do to change? What can I pet away and give a dog a bone? And that's rich off the net. Say hey, just to make that money until I find my itch to actually be. Well off and be and or successful, mm. um, in, in my eyes, and depending on what I want to do, uh, which is a good thing about these two, they can depict on what they want to do when they want to do it. We ain't mm-hmm. got to clock in for nothing, they ain't got to clock in unless they want to. He said, uh, Rich Alpinette said he put in what four hours. Mm-hmm. Why, why, D. Anthony Singles putting in 97. I'm lazy as shit. I ain't even going <laughs> So, you, see, you see two different mentalities. One person was putting in 97. One person was putting in four. And the person that was putting in four was still getting more money than the person that was putting in 97. Yeah. It's like the suits, you know. Like, in 2018, the dude with the suits work for the dude with the sweatpants now. Yeah. 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 You know, it, it's, man. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's the same type of thing. It's just we in a new era, man. Like people got to wake up that we no longer in the industrial era. But you know what? People profile so hard like yep. that that like somebody could see you and if they, oh, they do that all the time. If if they look at you the assumptions they'll be like, oh, oh, we, oh, we, we already know what this gentleman does. It, it ain't none of that. It ain't, yeah, it ain't none of that. He might, he, he doing something though. He got a rolly. Yeah. He a drug dealer for sure. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like the, like the, like we know. Swear, true story, bro. <laughs> people love stories. Talk to me outside the club. I'm in the road. Nah, this is a fact. He, I'm in the road. This is a true, true story. Lamb. This is a true, true, true story. Right? Talk about it. I'm in the rolls in the land. We sitting outside. We didn't even go inside. She pull up like, yo, let's we was at we were at eighty eleven. Just cooling, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, just seeing, seeing look like we ain't, we ain't on nothing. We ain't, I'm sitting on the car. He's sitting down cooling. We, you know, snapping, uh, uh, Snapchats, calling people and stuff. You know, just, mm-hmm. just cooling. Yeah, just chilling, just yeah. chilling. And this girl comes up. <laughs> You know she one of the educated black girls. She's educated. She okay. knows what she's talking about. She yeah. know. She know know what she's talking about. Yeah. Smart you ain't talking about. Yeah. Smart and dumb at the same time. Yeah. No, 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 smart, no street smarts. Mm. Gotcha. So yeah. she sitting there. She said, and, and 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 now mind you, one of one of our business partners, right, was with us. So it was three of us, right. We sitting there, and the girl goes, "What y'all do? Y'all drug dealers." <laughs> <laughs> and I got offended. Right. Of I, course. No, I got really offended. No, no, I, he did. I used to be a drug dealer. Drug, dealer. drug dealers. Drug dealers ain't making no money. Ain't got no money. <laughs> yeah. no, like, you can't <laughs> drug dealer too much credit. We, like, uh, dude, who you think? Wait. Big me? Too? Look, like, like, who is you? <laughs> so she said, what y'all is drug dealers? I looked at her and I said, why we got to be drug dealers? She said. Was this one of our fellow owners or was this someone outside? It was a black girl. <laughs> An educated <laughs> black girl. She was smart. You know what was what's the movie? You smart. You these. You was poor. Right. Yeah, you know, you, you, with the help, right? She had, yeah, yeah, the help. Yeah. She was real right. smart. Okay, okay. Like, she still wouldn't give you credit. She right. said there. She said I've never seen two African Americans driving cars like Nick makes niggas. Yeah, driving cars like this that wasn't drunk. Have people ever questioned y'all like? Cause I I've seen other people with lambs, and the first time, first thing people say when they even see one, 
is they like it probably ain't real. It's probably it's, it's so look, it's probably the chopped. Car <laughs> so the car is so foreign. It's foreign. Right. But that's your fucked up mindset. That's not mine. That's terrible. Right. That hey, so this is the crazy part. So I got the Lambo, and then like some people rented the, some Lambos afterwards. <laughs> and uh, just to be like me too. <laughs> right. Clips, I mean, Mr. Me Too. There's no shade. No I, feel, I feel like everybody should manifest their car, their dream car, get in and go. I mean, if you if you got a dream car, you see yourself being somewhere in life. Go get that car. Go to the lot. Just go sit in that motherfucker till they kick your ass off the lot. Like, <laughs> right. If you if you want a Benz and you in a Toyota right now, draw the damn Benz symbol on a big ass piece of paper uh, and, and tape it on there. Stick that shit to your to your damn uh, your icon your late your, your icon yeah, thing. <laughs> driving wheel until it turns into a Benz. But long story short is like you know um, <laughs> yeah we I get that a lot and uh. I asked the person like, "Yo, like, so with with them, they pulled up, and I asked him a Lambo question." Yeah, and he got so mad at me, <laughs> and it was like a good question. It was yeah, like, yo, I see you, dog. You in that Aventador? And he was like, "Aventador? What the fuck? No!" <laughs> like, <laughs> got big man. Like, that's the best Lambo you can get. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Like y'all like ever been somewhere basic like you just say you at Burger King or something and, or people just like well if you still got so much money what you doing here because you know you might be humble and you might so still go to some of the same places me, like all right so like <laughs> in, this, in the industry I'm in mean, like people know my position and yeah. like what I mean they got know your income they know everything yeah yeah but I I still when we go do events it'd be like. 5,000 people, 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. I still get on stage just like this. Exactly. Just like it. And I, and I, and when I, he says just like this, he means he ain't wearing a tuxedo like right now. And Jesus pieces <laughs> and chains and all that shit. And while everybody else is three piece suited. And I'll go up there and pretty much just talk about my life, uh, what I came from, you know, right. like my background, mm -hmm. like how I ain't like y'all motherfuckers and I still made it. Pretty the exact much. same money, if not more than y'all. Yeah, is it? Well, yeah, I, when, when I'm in the room, yeah. <laughs> no, you want to say no more. When I'm in the room in those type of events, you know, like usually most of them people in the room is like on my on, in in business with me. Yeah. Um, so, but just off of your question, yeah, like a lot of times, you know, people can look at you one way, and that's the great thing I love about. You know the world we in today because it's like man when i got into entrepreneurship like i said i had two felonies i was doing the same shit i, I had a trap house in meadowbrook <laughs> and it was 30 niggas that lived with me and you know and just like that i made a decision like i woke up one day and said look all 30 of you niggas gotta get the hell out of my house there you go. i'm changing my life today hell and yeah so a lot of people act like it's such a hard thing to give up bullshit to go up right. when yeah. really it's just you making that decision like like you was talking and you were saying you know what i don't know what i want to do i just know i want to do something Facts. and that's the beginning of everything you don't know what you're going to do it's just you you got to start somewhere you got to the winner is the person who went to sleep last night looking at the ceiling fans spinning talking yeah. about Lord, please send me a fucking opportunity. I don't care what it is. I'm gonna take except it. we don't tell that that term to the Lord, but continue. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, 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 sometimes I keep sometimes it real. Keep it real. Like, 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 hey, my nigga, yo, yo, hey, nigga, hey, you keep me out hey, this way. Knock, knock, <laughs> nigga. You hear me this time? Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you never fucking like hey, 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 Lord, hey, hey, Lord, last time I fumbled, bro. Right. Hey, I promise I keep this. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, hey. It'd be like that. Oh, I was really? that. <laughs> shit, but at the end of the day, the person is winning that went to sleep saying, I deserve more. And like you said, it. You know, that at the end of the day, it's, it's many opportunities out here. If we talk about making money, I could go on for five minutes straight, no breaths taken, naming income opportunities. It's just the mental part, man. A lot of people got the mental 
side fucked up. They don't mm-hmm. believe in themselves. They don't even believe that there's more out there. They believe that they're only worth, you know, getting a job. They believe if they want more money, only way to get more money is get more jobs. <laughs> and and you know, in in a before probably two thousand five, those rules were true. And I think a lot of people missed the era when the rules start to change Man. in the world. And you know of, what? A lot of people are still living in the old rules. Not, not. They don't even matter no more. Like, it's Donald Trump is our fucking president. <laughs> like, <laughs> say no more. He believes, yeah, like he went against all the rule, like the old school rules. <laughs> it don't matter about you where you from, you who your this. uncle was, your grandpa was. Was he a president before? No, it matter about this dude. He got the biggest brand out of everybody running for election. Shit. He's adding. I mean, he's telling. He's selling himself more than everybody else, and then he won. We in a sale world. Right Ain't even now. taking a salary. Just cool it in the White House. Yeah, oh, hold on, because, because yeah, the president is a pay cut for him. Fuck you, mean right. he, he playing house over here? Wait, wait I'm I'm house. still about to fire some shots. Hold on. So so why why I'm about I'm about to talk to uh, D. Anthony Singh real quick, the good old David. Talk to me real quick about this, and I and and uh, Rich off the net gonna drop some gospel as well. But we this something we all know in the room. But for the listeners, you know, somebody might be. There's so many people that say, oh, people just say that racism doesn't exist. What's the difference for somebody that's so somebody starting a business as a black black man? Black man, black woman, whatever the case, we already know what it is. But but what did you notice trying to start a business as a black man? Racism that, still fucking exists. What you mean? <laughs> exactly. Like I said, we know we know what it is. What you mean? I, I tell you a story. I was in. I had just bought a brand new S class. Now my car. And okay, cool bit. My car was a hundred. That's how I think my car was one hundred twenty-three thousand. Hmm. What I realized, it was 7.15 in the morning. I don't know who the hell is up <laughs> at 7.15 in the morning. What the fuck I could be doing at 7.15 in the morning? I'm driving down West Avenue. I'm not even in the hood. I'm not trapping. I'm, not, I'm going to open up one of my stores, 7.15. Cop pulls me over, okay? You're too fly that at that hour. 7.15. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the boss headed to work? Why? (laughs) Pulls me over. He says, Kid you not, kid you not. This true, this is a true story. If I'm lying, I'm not. True story. He pulls me over and says, You know why I pulled you over? And I said, In actuality, sir, I was like, I don't know. He said, Your license plate comes back to a 2011 GMC. So in other words, the car was too good. <laughs> I said, sir, these are custom plates. I just got them. Literally, I just got them. My license plate says David S. My name is David Singh. Yeah. I handed him my license. He said, I don't believe you. <laughs> Bro, I handed you my license that says David Singh. My wow. license plate says David Ed. He direct. He was direct with that. <laughs> Bro, you understand? You understand? That it, 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 it's sad to say, if I would have been a Caucasian person, you wouldn't got stopped at all. I wouldn't have got stopped at all. But because I'm African American, yeah. But look, and mind you, I saw the police officer, and the fucked up part about it, my mindset is, I'm gonna get put over. Facts. And, I, and like, like it, it wasn't like I was doing anything wrong. I'm go- literally I was at the stoplight. I waited for him to go forward before I started going. I didn't accelerate fast. My windows weren't tinted. My windows were rolled down. It was seven o'clock in the morning. I was enjoying the breeze, minding my own goddamn business. I know, cool ni- I know, niggas back home that got Chevys all hooked up that they can't even drive. It. Cool it. They just park it because license, <laughs> insurance. My car is registered. I got custom plates. Cool. I can't wait to get there one day. He <laughs> up, literally got behind me, lit me up. Comes up with the bullshit, talking about some, your yeah, plates come back to this and that, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Now I'm licensed to carry. Mm. 
Do you think I'm gonna tell this? This was a topic yesterday said on Facebook. You think I'm gonna tell this dude that I'm, I have a gun in the car? Man, no what? Way. Put me in handcuffs first that way in case you do shoot me. Right. At least I couldn't reach for the gun. I was whatever. I'm licensed to carry. Cool bet. Everything's great. You still but can't say. But I'm still not safe. That's the sad part. So he calls three other cops at seven in the morning. <laughs> they wow. All bored. They all bored. <laughs> they come up to the car. He said, "Step out of the car." I'm like, "For a registration issue?" <laughs> all right, cool. I step out. As soon as I, as soon as I open the door, he closes it. No, puts that hand out the window. Oh, you with that shit, shit. Oh, okay, cool, man. He opens the door, puts me in handcuffs, puts me behind the car. Sir, why am I in handcuffs? He said, because you're 6'6", six, six, and I don't feel safe. <laughs> yep. Wow. I was going to say, because you're tall. Wait. Tall. Wait. Hold you on. look like you might be Hold nice. Hold on. Wait. But your hair Wait curved. a minute. Right? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got three of your boys with me. With you, and I'm by myself. But you got a and you, and you got a gun on your waist, but you feel unsafe. Who cool bet? <laughs> How about you gonna say nothing? And you're not a basketball player. Either. Hey, ready? <laughs> so I'm handcuffed. Can't even do the layup the right says, now. <laughs> so, so you know, I have an S class. I can turn my car off from my phone. So that's what I did. Close the door, locked it, turned off my phone. Hold on, light stunt real quick. Drop He's the ball. <laughs> 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 Just a light listen, one. Listen, listen, so he pushed the button on him. So, <laughs> so wait, no, no. So wait, he kept the door open, so the trunk wasn't open. Okay. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna search your car. No, sir, you're not gonna search my car because you don't have probable cause. Second of all, this is not a search your car offense. I didn't do nothing. Yeah. Only thing that doesn't match is my registration. Okay, cool. If you're gonna do something, just tow my car, take me to jail, whatever you're gonna do. I'm not gonna argue with you. Oh my god. Here comes his little his little compadre. So you think you hot shit because you got S-Clan? Oh, my God. <laughs> so you so you mad at my taste? Wait, like, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> hold on, wait. So what is my total? I said, bro, why are you even talking to me? I said, you tell a police car for a living. Go monitor the streets for somebody who's really doing some shit. I'm going to work. Oh, so you do think you hot shit. Oh, huh? <laughs> um, he think he oh, felt. Wait, so wait, so wait. You stunned it on he him. <laughs> he said, I bet you would have whooped my ass, huh? Oh my god. Aren't you a police? So you walk. Oh, I see where this is going. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna shut up. He, he, he gave you the anger. Look, he look, said, You're an angry he, man. He said, Oh, you're angry, angry. Yeah, I'm angry. <laughs> but don't worry about it. So I'm sh- I, I told myself, You know what? This is why this is why these situations go sideways. Because we as African Americans choose pride over. Life. What's smart? Life. Not me. Not me. I value my life. Not me. No. And, and everybody does. Till there's a white man in your face talking about, yeah, nigga, what you gonna do? No. No. You, I'm never, I'm wait. Never, wait. Never, wait. wait. That's, that's what most of us should do. I'm so... Hold on. Watch this. I'm so funny with, with this shit that I've been stopped before and I won't even get my own ID out. Like, I've been put... tail Get out the car and they're like, let me see your ID. I'm like, back left pocket. Let me see your ID. Back left pocket. Reach in there. I let him. I let him get it. I'm not going in my pocket. I'm not doing anything. That's what you gotta do. But most African Americans, because we were raised the way we were raised, you get it. No, don't let nobody punk you at the playground. The first day I got my car, I got pulled over. over Oh my god, that fast. My camera man. And I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how this works. People can't see it on 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 the podcast. This is audio, but I'm seeing something. The cop knows me. I've never had to bend down this long <laughs> to write somebody a ticket, but this is a nice car, <laughs> Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts, wait Mr. a minute. He walked up to the car and said, you Garrett? You get? <laughs> I said, Dan, he know me. So, oh, my God. It's valid. I was like, yo, I was like, well, good thing my shit worked. Right. <laughs> like, because I ain't know you was going to be pulling up asking for the name like that. You had some strange experiences in your day, watch y'all? Absolutely. Talk yeah, about it. Said, Talk crazy. about it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, well, what you had? As a matter of fact, I actually had one recently. Oh, Whatever. Well, um, so. Me and my, um, cause I actually coach, uh, Texas A&M University, San Antonio. A bum fell out there. <laughs> yeah, so we was on our way back from the games and, um, cop pulled me over for speeding. So you know how the small towns, we was out in Victoria, Texas. 
So the small towns, you know, like as soon as you hit the small towns, the the, the speed decrease. Yeah. So I'm I'm on the decline, and the cops see me, and they pull me over. So uh, what ends up happening is we get pulled over, and I'm driving, and I'm out of like, my license is suspended. So mm. I'm over here like the only reason why I'm driving is riding dirty. My player told me to drive because he he, he just played a full game. Right? Yeah. Like we only had six players that game, so he's hurting. Yeah. So he was like, yo, coach, can you drive? I was like, perfectly fine. I got you. So I'm on, we get pulled over and, uh, you know, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, I'm nervous as shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know where I'm at, you know what's going on, who, what, when, where, why. So, you know, I tell him, I was like, there shouldn't be nothing on my license, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. So then he was like, step out the car. Oh my God. So I step out the car and I was like, I know if I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for me. I ain't going for him. You know what I'm saying? So they searched the car, right? They searched the car. He was like, the only reason I'm searching the car is because you was dishonest with me. Huh? In regards to the <laughs> when they ran my name and stuff. So I was like, so You gave him the wrong name or what? No, I gave him, no, I gave him my, I gave him my ID because I, oh, I, you know what I'm saying? So I gave him everything, you know what I'm saying? I was like, look, I was just nervous. I was like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, we just came back from the game. No, no, he had my ID, so he has my full name. So he doesn't have nothing that is really dishonest. So I was like, I and you still get this because he gave me my driver's license. license. So I gave my ID, and I was like, the only reason. And I told him, I was like, the only reason my driver's is because my my players hurt. And your and your ID said Jezebel. <laughs> First of all, we gonna get off. First of all, shout out to C Murph. C Murph. <laughs> Second. Cut that out. <laughs> I know you. Oh, see Murph, see Murph. Oh, yes. yeah, Jay. Hey, shout out to Jessica Bell. Hey, it just dropped. I ain't yeah. downloaded it yet, but it's coming yeah, out. You gotta get that. You gotta get that downloaded. But um, so I get pulled over. They open the they open the joint. They search the car, and I tell them when I get out there, I was like, yo, I was just nervous. Like I got this going on. I got this going on. So like this is what's real. And he was like, okay. He's like, you should just tell me that in the first place. I was like, well, sure, I'm nervous. I don't, I don't know what was going on. We in a different town. I don't know. We like, I'm like 20 miles. I'm like 20 minutes from my house. All right. So then my player, he was like, coach, we good. Don't even worry about this. Cause they pulled him out and they tried to start searching the car. So we like, the only thing we worried about is like, it's cold out. That's the only thing we worried about is cold out. <laughs> wow. So long story short, um, they search the car, they do everything. And then it's like nothing. It's nothing in the car. I literally told them. The funny thing about it is they told me that they just pulled over another one of my players. Damn. For speed. But they let him off with a warning. Did he have a different et- ethnicity? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course he did. Definitely <laughs> different ethnicity. So, so then they pulled him over and they started because it, he, he, was, he was Caucasian. Dude I'm riding with is me. I'm African American. And then the dude I was riding with looked like he was Hispanic. Or, and or Native American and he mixed with something like that. <laughs> you were unaware of the gentleman's race that you I'm were rolling with. Also, <laughs> like, also like six two, six three. Yeah. So we both outside the car, just cool and cold. <laughs> and then next thing you know, they was like, Hey, yo, blah blah blah. He was like, next time just be honest with me. They searched our car and then they was like, put the stuff back in the car and then they let us off. <laughs> now I'm glad they let us off in regards to because it could have been a lot worse. Right. You know what I'm saying? In regards to the situation. I'm like, I probably could be somewhere, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. But I'm not. So, um, but it did happen that way. And I was like, dang. We literally just spent 20 or 30 minutes of our life. And I I, I, I was on the decline. I was speeding in regards to like switching from town to town. Like, Swinging and banging. Yeah. Swinging and banging. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that. So the good thing about it is we didn't get caught for speeding. And he did let us go in regards to that aspect. So I could thank the cop for that, but at the same time, I was like, dang, did you really have to search the car? He was with that jive, though. Did you really have to search the car? Yeah, uh, he, was, he was with that jive. But the only reason he was like, yeah, I was We're looking for the guns and dope. We know right, you got yeah, it. Right. We know it's in there. We know you got it. And the funny thing about it is, guess what? I'm dressed up. I got slacks on, dress shoes on. I got on. I'm going to tell you something funny. That's why you got off. I've I noticed I've noticed this time I've been pulled over before on a work day mm-hmm. with a necktie on and etc. Everything was no great. Worries. Everything was gravy. You go, sir. Yeah, everything yeah. was gravy. Yeah. I've been caught on my off day with a flag on and a. You Where know. the fuck you going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same gentleman. 
I'm the same gentleman you saw the other day. Now that I'm flagged up and 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 overalls and pants or whatever, you you saw a businessman with a briefcase the other day. Now I'm a little bit questionable. <laughs> I want to get back to um, these, these, these two. Yeah, exactly. Over here, man. Um, like I said, I've been I've been soaking this in, man. We I, got I, to, I, I and y'all got to. <laughs> I had a lot to say. I had a lot to say, but I wanted to let them. And it's speak. a lot to hear, though. And it's a lot to hear. And I want to let these gentlemen speak because it is it is it's very impressive um, for a not only our culture that's the first place to start not only our culture but just far as a as a man and, and just an individual alone no matter what race you are right facts. just a just a man just being a man yeah. in this world it's impressive and we got to provide you, you know got to provide for not only yourself but if you got a family your family. So we want to know, and and um, I know y'all keep saying this business and this business and this business. So um, I have anything because I don't. Like, of course, you can't sit. You know, I don't want you to put it out there. You know, what I'm saying yeah. inquiring minds definitely want to know at this point. But um, we want to know. And I'm gonna be in uh, personally me, but I'm uh, pretty sure uh, Velvet want to know as well. Like. And everybody, I, like I want to be like a, an apprentice, like or or um, like you said, if you got that mindset, I want to be coachable in regards to the aspect to get to where you guys are at um, personally. And like I said, I, I don't I don't feel like Velvet is too far off from this tree where I'm heading. Are we so on the same tree? The listeners, in regards to being coachable. And- Hold on, that's black man. We're not on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> we we in the same circle. Let's 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 say it like that. But let's talk to him. Let me. I would yeah. rephrase that. I would, I would rephrase that. The apple falling too far from the tree. Yeah, we we that's apples right. on the tree. Okay, so, that's. So, so, that's, that's still it. <laughs> you know, right. So so I'm gonna say this. We're we're gentlemen in a circle, hearing good things. Yeah. <laughs> we're gentlemen, and we want to follow. Um, the footsteps of successors. Well, I know, I know Gary's gonna take this. But the only thing that I want to kind of s- to start it is, and it, it's not even to sound cliche, it, mm-hmm. it's got to be a decision that's not just made from the beginning, but it's got to be made daily. Okay. And, and, and a sense of this has got to be something that you live and breathe. Not even breathe. It's got to be in your soul, okay? Because of the fact that when nobody supports you, you still got to support you, okay? And that's the that's the that's the I think the thing that struggles even the most. Mm-hmm. You could wake up any day and say, "Yo, I'm ready to make a change." Like I said, it's 2019, New Year, New right. Year, all, all the BS, all the things that people say that they want to do. It's show sure coming. <laughs> but the but the issue is, for one thing, a lot of people like to do stuff alone. Mm. Even and 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 what's what's even worse about San Antonio than any other city is like I said it's unsupported. Thanks. People always feel like they see you shining and you capping. It's not about capping. It's just motivation. People, but 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 motivation enough to say that you know what you can get there too. People always see me in nice cars, have nice clothes, nice shoes, like this, like that. They just they just accepted it. Mm-hmm. But that's even where I fucked up because I got to the to the top. And looked around, but like, oh, I don't really see nobody. Mm-hmm. That's where I was wrong, and and that, and, it, and it's sad because I gave up on people. Okay. I gave up in helping people mm-hmm. because of one decision I made, or one decision I made, or because I kept getting burned, or because people just didn't want to believe. I gave up on people, but the issue is even being at the top alone is not success. Right. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna let Gary take that one because that's his specialty. But I, I, I really want to get that out there. No matter what you do, whether you decide to run for president or just just change your mind, your job, change your mindset. You, you, you can't not ever make it alone. So if you want to get to the top, be at the top of people that you love, not just be at the top alone. Because again, who wants to have fun being overseas and you by yourself? Exactly. That ain't dope. That ain't cool. That ain't. And who also wants to be overseas and paying for everybody? That ain't fun. That ain't dope. That ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you, you, you want to eat with everybody. If that makes sense. Talk about it. 
Yeah, so what was, yeah. what was you saying? So, um, in regards to, um, cause like I said, I want to, I would like to be taken under a, a wing and, and, you know, be, be steered on this, on this path, this process, this, this, um, lifestyle change. Right. Pretty much what it is in regards to going to either uh, pretty much how far you can take me and how far I want to be taken. Right. Um, and I know it starts with me, as you stated. Right. So, um, to help me in regards to this, because you're already there. And I know um, that we're looking to, and what I would like to do when I when I get there is to pull people from the bottom to the top right. and keep the process going so that person can do the exact same thing. Absolutely. So, um, that's why I said I would like to be like an apprentice, um, maybe have you as a mentor type vibe because, you know, I'm getting older. You know what I'm saying? Right. As a young man, you're younger than me and I want to be where you are right? mm-hmm. already. So, as a help me help you situation, um, and I'm pretty sure, I, I know I'm coachable right. um, in regards to the aspect of getting to your level and not only so Allowing what's the steps? Proud. Yeah, what what is this? If, and I don't, we don't have to talk about it. But like you know, I know that's y'all thing, but I would I would love to for the people too, is regards to what helps what helps them be coachable and ready to take to the next level in this business that you guys have. Right. So, um, you know, a couple of things as far as like becoming successful uh, in any business I, you know I don't really like to just in, in things like this I don't like to solo my business because right. you know I have so many people that look up to me in other businesses right. and stuff like that so I don't have to to get the message across I don't have to be pitching something right. but as, as far as you know becoming successful in these businesses it has to be a a uh you well it starts with you like you just said right and you have to understand that you're already winning before the the, the compensation comes right you're and what i mean by that is usually when you get around so like let's say you start working with me right the first thing that you're already winning is because you get to learn from somebody um that's a real seven figure earner like real seven figures and my job is to pour into people Mm. And to teach them everything I know, mm-hmm. uh, cause it's nothing really I could get out of a person at this point. Um, I understand that. No matter what the business, let's say the business was a hundred, let's say the business was 20, let's say the business was 50, 200, whatever. My knowledge is way worth more, worth way more than any business investment. Right. Um, so I feel like, People need to understand when getting into business and you do have a mentor on your side or somebody that's willing to coach you, point you in the right direction. Because I didn't have any of them things. So I definitely right. know the difference of when you do have someone and you don't. Um, you're winning already right there because you're now surra- you know, surrounding yourself around a whole different tax bracket. It's, it's kind of like when I was growing up, everybody used to kind of talk about the Illuminati and, yeah. and, <laughs> yeah. and mm-hmm. secret societies. Yeah, right. And, right. and now that I'm older, I realize those are secret societies. They are secret groups. But we as broke ass motherfuckers looked at them the wrong way. Facts. We looked at them as, oh, they had to sell their soul and devil worshipers. And exactly. the truth is, they had to sacrifice going out every night. They had to sacrifice chilling with their friends every day. They had to sacrifice having fun every day to now become the richest people of the world. And they not just going to allow anybody in. And so it's kind of the same way with, with business now, now that we're kind of in control. And when I said, you know, the internet killed racism, I didn't mean as far as a white person liking a, a, the opposite race or a black person liking the opposite. I meant as far as you having to be accepted by someone to become a successful and not be an athlete uh, or a rapper. It don't matter no more. Right. Um, so as far as business, you need to understand you're already winning because of the culture you're being uh, introduced to, the, the, 
the knowledge you're being introduced to, the people you're going to be surrounded mm-hmm. surrounded by. You know, like before you get into business, like I know me, I was surrounded by fucking Kanan and and Tommy Ghost, cousin Pookie, <laughs> yeah, uh, bro, man on the fifth floor. Those was go. those was my surroundings, right? And then it turned into I'm now surrounded by. The, the richest people in the world, not and, and, and I don't mean that because I chill with them every day. Is that's who I listen to every day. That's who I look at every day. Okay. That that's the people who Instagram stories I watch, and the uh, you can have a mentor without even knowing the person. Like, mm. The best mentors is usually people that are dead. Um. So as far as like business and mentorship. Is just you gotta understand. Yeah, well, no, like, real you, stuff, you, you like, can't just breeze past that. A bum's. Yeah, I think he just dropped knowledge and just walked on. Like, <laughs> like, like, just a like, he, just, he just stepped over a puddle. Like, here's a puddle. I'm just gonna step the over it. Nah, I mean, he, he dropped gyms and kept on going. He was like, there, there's a word. There's a word for this. Ba- bars. You got pain. Has success you see what not to do versus right. what to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people are like, hey, I'm going to just wing it and learn it on my own. Well, yeah, you can get it that way, but it's already somebody who wrote a book step by step by step by step exactly what they did to make their first million dollars. So as far as just mentorship and coaching, uh, you just got to get the fuck out your own way and understand yes. that. Yeah, you a grown ass man, but being a grown ass man don't mean you gotta be stupid as hell. Exactly. To understand that you're on a whole nother lifestyle than what you got right now, and in order way the only way to get it is either struggle hard trying to get it on your own, or just copy somebody who has success doing it. Like I literally got where I'm at because. You know, not only was my probation officer calling me every week talking about <laughs> I need that money, right. but I was so hungry, I just said, fuck it, I'm going to find 10 people that are making the type of money I want to make, and I'm going to copy every single thing they do uh, for a year stretch. More bars. And it's laws. It's like money has laws. And ever since I was a kid, I, I, I knew this. It's like money has rules. You got to treat people right. Yeah. Treat people right. Hold your word. But another rule that a lot of people are asleep on when it comes to money. If you do everything somebody's doing with money, and like if you do every single thing somebody that's successful is doing, it's by law that you have to get at least close to what they have. It's like a law. The only thing is people put it on a, a, a time period. So uh, you'll, you'll have a dude that's been broke 15 years struggling. He done had 30 jobs in 15 years, but he'll find a new opportunity and give it 30 days. Mm. Mm. You know, and, let that and, season for y'all. Let's and marinate tell, and tell you like, yo, this taking too long. Mm hmm. You know, and then they'll go back and get five more jobs after that. You, so, I'm, I'm, you, I'm, I'm going to say this too. One thing you said earlier that kind of resonated with me. Is people people will just say if you have a job and right. you and you say shoot this ain't doing it I'm gonna get know. two other two jobs. Jobs. Yeah. What, jobs. What when you get two more jobs, you you actually you you're making more money than you were making, but you're still losing. You're right. losing time because yeah, you're losing you time. Never, you can That's never get going. time back. And so the thing about me, like I talk to rappers, ball players, basketball players. Entrepreneurs, realtors, and people that are not financially stable. Right. And the thing is, you know, everybody tries to compare their life to mine. And so, you know, it's one thing to talk to somebody without like money. Mm-hmm. Right. But when I'm talking to somebody with money, the main thing they complain about is not having time. Yeah, and, and like David said, so when you look at someone like me and you're like, hey, I make six figures a month. And I'm like, well, me too. And they're like, well, all right, I got to go to work. And I'm like, all right, I'm about to play 2K. Right. <laughs> well, I'm, about to, I'm about to go take a nap. But before you dive in, I'm going to just say this. Big Meech and Big Meech said this, but I never forgot it. He said there's two things in this world. There's time and money. If you got money, you don't got time. Yeah. If you got time, you don't got, got money. money. Yeah. 
And I was like, damn. Oh, I said, that's some deep shit. Because he could meet somebody literally, literally, and I've seen it. He could meet somebody literally that has more cash than he does. But the knowledge that he has makes him have more cash than them. And that's and that's and that's deep because I could be a rapper, I could be two chains. Yo, get it. Nigga. Mm-hmm. I just made a million dollars in two months. Mm-hmm. Doing six shows. Mm-hmm. Gary, being Gary, go tell him I still make my money. <laughs> I like that. Even though, even though, yes, two chains might have twenty million dollars in the bank. But two chains only has twenty million dollars in the bank because he raps. But what happens when he's not rapping and he's not on that wave no more? Yeah. It's deep. Because because the knowledge that he has teaches him that guess what? This is gonna keep going to the end of time. So so rappers have a time limit. They they start off top, they got a million people following them. They they booked out for three years. And then you hit the stage where it's like, okay, I'm in my junior year. Mm. I'm, I'm still getting shows, but now I'm getting booked in Vegas. I'm getting booked in Hollywood. I'm not getting all these town to town to town and going on 36 tour tours. Maybe I'm going on 12. Then it's like, yo, I'm glad to get two tours a year. Then you get old. You but guess what? Glad young to get old. On Thursday. <laughs> right? on Thursday. Yo, hey, New Year's they book me once a year, so you go from doing 56 shows in a year to doing two. You you gave me a question for you, matter of fact. So I know y'all hear this a lot, and we all hear this. When you ask somebody if you had a million dollars, what would you do? The first thing everybody say is invest. Or if somebody, they shit when they say that. yeah, and and, and, and this. No, 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 I'm gonna be real with you. And, somebody said they get a million dollars. Somebody get a million dollars. Which person you gonna do? You gonna buy a car? Yeah, buy some clothes. You gonna do it because guess what? You do it every year. Somebody when, when when you get an income tax check, what do you do? They see that's Ball what I'm saying. Out. Ball out. People that's go crazy little. with two thousand dollars. So what's I, the difference? So you know, if you have a million, you ain't gonna act no different. They full of shit. So, Sorry, but but here's the thing. Here's my question though. That's what made me mad. When yeah, I, I'm sure it did. Cause cause I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna piss you off some more here. When people say invest. They don't even say I'll invest in Target. I'll invest in Apple. People just—that's a word that has no meaning unless you, yeah, unless you saying. actually know what you're going to invest in. Because people say I'll invest, but if you say what you're going to invest in, oh, I, I, I'm going to invest. Who you know, this Gucci bill? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you going to invest? Uh, I'm just going to. I'm invest. I'm gonna like, that like they don't teach investing nowhere. You know, so like. In the beginning, when I started making money, I was the type of guy like, oh, you don't want to make money with me? You type of, you, you stupid. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't want to do this? Like, Now what? it's like, here's the opportunity. What? Do what you want to do. <laughs> no, but like, kind of like, knocking jobs. Like, I was young. Yeah. Like, I've been doing this since I was like 20. No, oh, okay. I'm 28 now. So in the beginning, being a 20-year-old making six figures a year, it was like, mm-hmm. like, what? How dare you say no? <laughs> But yeah. now it's like, damn! I realize we were programmed to be this way. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't name not one class where they teach you how to be wealthy, or I can't name one class where they teach you even how to invest into anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, like, as far as investments, man, uh, people they say they want to invest just because. I just want to get out this rap. It's the right thing to say. <laughs> yeah, it's like the right, like, I just... I'm going to donate and I'm going to invest. When I get a yeah, million, I'm going to invest in real estate. And I'm going to donate and I'm going to invest. In what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like, people, it, that's because they just don't have the knowledge on it or what to invest. Not even knowing, like, like, so every day I get somebody who calls me and they want to do like some businesses, you know, and and when I sit back, I'm hearing the numbers. I'm sure y'all hear all them stories. My mom has two arms. She has one arm and one leg. Oh, I get those from Nigeria <laughs> and Africa every yeah. day. Yeah. Yo, my mom, she just had the biggest tumor in her brain. Can you transfer me $8,000 to take care of her? Like, no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is concerning. <laughs> I get a lot of those scam, scam type of men. But no, I get a lot of people with, you know, 
some real touching stories. That's real, yeah. So before we uh I wanna before we end this, I wanna take it to a, a, a even deeper place here. With y'all both being businessmen, we got two bu- businessmen in the building. And we got, we, a, got four, a, we got four because we got apprentices in the house. And matter of fact, matter of fact, so watch, watch this. So with y'all both being uh, in business and, and in entrepreneurship, what is a company of course, there's you want to be yourself. So I, I, y'all don't strike me as I wish I was this guy, but but I will, <laughs> y'all I, I will say this. What's a business? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what's a business? <laughs> what's a business model? Is there any business that you've seen that I don't care if it's Nike, Amazon, that you're like, you know what? I really respect the way they do business. Uh, any company anybody with results man uh, but you mean like our influences yeah and and not that you're trying to be them but you just like they do good business i like this I think, person i think kevin hart does good kevin business hart. Uh, yeah. drake does good rick ross does good business because because you got rick ross and then you got birdman you know <laughs> you got dj paul the same. yeah if you think about it guess what rick ross does what <laughs> Uh-huh. But, but you but he don't talk yeah, he's talked about it before, but he owns Wingstop. Right. So guess what? Check he's through. residually making money when he can't rap no more. Right. And that's what we trying to tell people. You ain't gonna be you forever. After this over, are you gonna still get have money? And, 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 and Ross even talks about it. Rich forever. What did, I mean I mean what you mean? He ain't saying I'm gonna be rapping forever. He said I'm gonna be rich, rich forever. forever. Why? So, so, so you got to psychologically stop listening to the shit just because Rick Ross said it. Listen to Rick, what Rick Ross is saying. I respect this cat. Yeah. Because even when he didn't have it, he was already talking. His that. mindset told him, "I'm gonna have it." Mm-hmm. We were in a business that fucked us over, bad. Yeah. That didn't stop him from. Saying, That's where people stop a lot of times. A lot of people say that. Let me go back to work. A lot of people <laughs> say, or rather say. Okay, I tried this, it didn't work. Let me go spend twenty dollars here, ten dollars here, fifty dollars for gas, all this money for lunch to get paid in two weeks. That's me. Mm. That's, That's a fucked up mindset. Right. Because I'm guess sure. what? Kmart's closed, Walmart's closed, they go in neighborhood centers. The biggest businesses in the country are downsizing. Mm. And y'all running to go work for them for what? If you didn't know what you heard, you heard this thing called facts. No, but I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying that that that's you people people say okay, well if nothing else I can go work for Walmart. Guess what? Walmart's downsizing. Kmart's gone. All these serious gonna be gone. Big big places that you was, see Walmart got thirty lanes and only two of them be open. Right, y'all niggas working. It's a reason going to do self checkout. <laughs> There's they a reason. Y'all, they got y'all working for them. Soon. So, they I, say they say all oh, we, we, we go over to nine self checkouts. And have somebody at the door with a yellow jacket tell me, so can I check your receipt? <laughs> watch this, watch this, watch this. One time I was in Walmart and not only, this ain't shocking. They had two, about two lanes open. The line was close to the back of the store. I saw like four or five people with their Walmart vest on sitting on a bench. And on my oh, way, really? on my way out, I asked them what, you know, what they were doing. And they was like, we got, uh, 38 hours and it's almost, it's finna be, at midnight. It's going to turn Sunday and it's going to start a new week. So D- then, we, then we can clock in because we might get too many hours. So, I, so I was like, so I was like, so I was like, y'all got enough people here, but y'all ain't going to put them on because they don't want you to get too many hours. So y'all, gonna, y'all going to have a seat and wait till midnight and then clock in so it can be a new yes, week. Sir. That's hey, let me ask you something. Talk about it. When you when you go on Walmart, <clears throat> when you go on Walmart, and that guy with the yellow jacket on, <laughs> is he usually old or young? Old. Old, right? <laughs> so that dude at Walmart with the with the yellow jacket on that stand, stands there all day <clears throat> is usually old. I think that guy 
Everybody listening to this podcast should go talk to that guy and ask him what does he regret in life. Wow. Because if you think about it, that guy has been through everything in life. He's done pr- pretty much seen everything he could in life, and he ended his life being doorman at, at Walmart. So, you know, one thing I take from that is the definition of poor is passing over opportunities repeatedly. And when I look at them guys at Walmart... Let that marinate for y'all. They didn't catch it. Yeah, so the definition (laughs) of poor is passing over opportunities repeatedly. He keeps dropping bars in here. And when you go... Next time you're at Walmart and you see that old guy at the front, and we all agreed, right? At the front. Always. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. So, so no matter what state you in, it's going to be an old dude in the front of Walmart with a yellow <laughs> or blue jacket on. Ask him, what do you regret most out of life? And I guarantee he'll talk to you for an hour. Or the, or the Waffle House security guy. Oh, no, no, no. You don't want to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you he's a felon. <laughs> He a goon too. Start with the dude in Walmart first. He talks to both of them. Yeah. Waffle House only hired gangsters right. anyway. <laughs> they only hire gangsters. You right. The dude, the dude at Waffle House gonna steal your serve right. you right there. Yeah. <laughs> he, he might beat your ass at the and 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 Crip and Crip walk and give you a waffle. Right. <laughs> So basically what I mean by that is like, you know, everybody pray, wish, and hope for opportunity. They pray, wish, and hope for more out of life. Uh, they close their eyes and say, I hope I can get this and wish mm-hmm. for that. And I hope we can live in a world that's like this and like that and land the opportunity not realizing if you just open your goddamn eyes, right. we are in that world uh right now so people just need to take advantage of opportunities stop passing them over the last thing you want to do is be 60 70 years old talking about let me see your receipt at walmart because you passed over every single opportunity you passed over the opportunity to 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 buy gold low you passed over the opportunity to get in uber early you passed over opportunity to Get into Amazon. You passed over the right. opportunity to get into Bitcoin. You passed over the opportunity hey. to learn a new skill set. You passed over opportunity to start a new business. Right. And then at the end of the year, you're going to say, well, shit was just messed up. It wasn't nothing going on. I know you're just passing over every single opportunity that you get. And that's the reason why you stay in the same spot. So a lot of people want new results, but they don't do any new things. That's what you call insanity. Whoa. So we mm-hmm. just need to stop passing over the opportunities that are being blessed to us. We can't keep asking God for opportunities when we turn our back on them. Uh, everybody knows somebody on Facebook that offers some type of business or service that can help you start testing them out for yourself. Start seeing, stop listening to the bum on your mama couch that been there for 10 years telling <laughs> you them things don't work or I, I heard this, I heard that and get out there and try it yourself. Like investments nowadays are very, very low and, and it's worth you trying it than relying on bro man from the flip fifth floor to tell you <laughs> if it's a good opportunity or relying on cousin Pookie that's strung out to tell you if it works or not. Like we gotta start taking our future in our own hands. Man. Exactly. Um I don't know if y'all um I don't think anybody needs to miss this episode. Not at all. Um, I'm sharing the fuck out of this episode. <laughs> I don't think anybody needs to miss this episode, man. It's a lot of it's a lot of knowledge that was dropped here, and it's a lot of things gems, that, um, man. People just need to hear in general in regards to any and everything that you doubt in yourself, right? Um, to get to that next level, self doubt. And we all got it. I know. I even personally have it. Like I said, I um, I've done. Everything that you could probably think of in regards to trying to go to the next level, you know, your herbal lives, your um, everything that has to do with, um, I guess you could say, supplements and or nutrition, 
right. um, insurance, life insurance, things like that, and that nature. Um, but I didn't, I noticed that I now noticed that I didn't have it in me to continue on to go to the next level in these adventures that was presented to me. Right. Um, but I knew I wanted it. Right. Um, but I didn't work for it to go get it. And I noticed that about myself now to where, as you stated, um, when you, when you don't have nobody backing you and everybody's doubting you, you can't doubt yourself, um, and continue to move forward because, um, and I've heard this. And, um, That's what we need to hear. What, what's our takeaways? What's yeah, I'm, Continue I'm, with you. I'm going to tell you my takeaways. Podcast, you know what I'm saying? We <laughs> cooking. We cooking. Let's get it. Yeah, man. Um, I've taken away quite a bit. Um, and and got me of business ventures that, that has ceased and or, and or have stopped. Um, and it's all because of me. Right. That's why I was gonna say, is it because the company's no longer in business, or are you just quit? No, it's, it's actually because of me. Right. And I didn't take them um, as we started this in the beginning. Me, mm-hmm. Anthony Singh, saying you just didn't take it seriously. Right? Exactly. Um, I thought it was just for play play. Mm-hmm. You know, and because um, the investment, was right? Play-play. Cause mm-hmm. The investment was play play. But I know, I know now about myself that I'm a competitor, and if I don't really have nobody pushing me, right. Um, which is actually what I, I, you I strive I, off competition. Yeah, I strive off competition. If I don't have nobody just saying, "Hey," they be like, "Hey, yeah, this is good," then I'm like, "All right, I'm in," right. and they're like, "All right, cool," and that's it. That's the last word thing you heard from me. You, you, you know what? You though? listen to the, you listen to the the uh, ops. What do they call it? The uh, the pizzazz instead of the substance. Right. You 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 was looking at the what was designed to suck you in instead of figuring out well, what am I here for? Right. Oh, this. The, I, I'm looking at the delivery and not the substance. Like, how does this work? Right. I, mean, I didn't even take the, the steps to, to figure to, out what to, to get to the next level. My, my takeaway is the time, which is something that I that I'm still living. I'm still living time because one one thing that I, I won't drop is the fact that people. With internet and everything, people look at instant success. People look at the soldier boys or the people who put, which are what appears to be, as they both stated, you know, soldier boy was doing that right. for quite some time. You see it and say, oh, he dropped one song and he was a, it was it. That, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case for these gentlemen. They said they did other business ventures before it was a success. I'm on the same mindset. I'm just like, you can't do something and say, oh, it didn't work. So right. just how he, the analogy he used with the barbershop, you open the barbershop, you put the open sign in the window. Don't yeah. nobody get their hair clothes cut. So you put the clothes sign on it. Next day. You, put the, you put the clothes yeah, sign on good, it. Good, good. Yeah. Like, yo, this shit a coffee shop next week. I've, I've seen, I've seen podcasts come out. I've seen podcasts come out, and they drop two episodes, it's and they, and they say this ain't Man, working. That, that shit had like hey, you, watch you know the crazy like only way you can fail is die or quit, right? Mm-hmm. Only way you can fail is die or quit because everybody else already put the success tips out there how to succeed. So only way you can fail, die or quit. Right. The fucked up part is everybody quits yes. before they die. Damn. You ain't even dead. That's you might have started. You might have started your wave and didn't even know it. Like, yo, yo, podcast was dope. Yo. That's like that's like a series that like quit like on the third episode. Like, yo, summer power sucked. Like, yo, what the yo, fuck? Like, literally, but we believed in the series, so we keep watching that shit. Like, like damn, it's season yo. six. And yo, I I stopped caring about that shit in season three. Dead ass. You you know what? I'm gonna tell you something that I did that I didn't even know. I told I told Sa Wild Child. I, I I used to chop and screw, and I still know how to. I got all the equipment to do it, and I would chop and screw and upload something to YouTube. I wouldn't really, I wasn't, at that time, I was just doing whatever the fuck I was doing. I would upload it, I would be like, somebody could check it out. Years later, I went and pulled my old page, and I got tracks that got, like, uploaded to YouTube. It got, like, 50,000 views, 75,000 views, and I was like, oh, you and, didn't do that shit for now. That was six months ago. But I, but I never, I never put. You know, on YouTube, you have to monetize your YouTube, or right. you don't get no money. Right. So after the fact, I monetized it. Of course, I didn't get nothing because I did it after the fact. But that was my old page before I was podcasting. So I was like, hold on, 
I was like, I had a wave. I wasn't even checking on my own wave. I had a wave I didn't know about. I used, to rap. I used to rap, and when I was rapping, the inter- I mean, the internet really wasn't... What it is now. It was just... You know, I grew up in the Soldier Boy era. Yeah. So, he, like you said, he was the first one. And then after that, it wasn't really like a lot of ones after that. Until right. like now. Right. And... Like kind of off of what you said, when I was rapping, I was rapping my life. This is what we doing out here. Trying we really good. about that shit, and <laughs> that wasn't the thing. It's so time. like now that I'm 28, when I look at the Migos and the Young Dolphs, and I'm like, yo, these niggas literally rapping the same way I was doing back right. in 2008. Thinking to the streets just like it's pop. Like yeah. in 2008, and it's like. You know, like they say, if if you don't put it out there, like the most talented people are the people in the in the graveyards, because they mm. they took all their talents to the grave. Exactly. You know, like they took everything. Like, but I got yeah, yeah, no, yeah. not even oh. just like that, but like hell, yo, yeah. the dude with the billion dollar idea who kept telling himself he need to take it to to the agency so they could print it up, get the... But he didn't do it himself. He didn't do it. He just sat on it. And Uber came out. (laughs) Yeah, the dude that said, yo, I'm going to put Taxi out of business, create an app. Right. Where you can ride shit. Where you can ride, and he didn't do it, now Uber here. So, it, it... you know, the most everybody got an idea that exists now that you didn't do. You just thought about it one everybody, day. I told you. Everybody got an idea that exists now that the first, first, first person didn't put it out. Right. That I, first, first, first person is in the graveyard looking stupid. I heard, I heard Spike Lee say this once on an interview and it, it kind of, this kind of what even changed my mindset. He said, do you know how many Michael Jordans don't play basketball? Do you, Anymore. Do you know how they and they still alive? Do you know how many Tupacs don't rap? Don't rap. They just like they was as capable. They just Yo, so they work at Home Depot. Every every day, like my brother, he's a rapper, and he he got all these rappers. And I and you know a lot of people think like money is the solution. Hmm. We not in the big beach era no more where money can buy your way in. Everybody got money nowadays. Like scammers, drug <laughs> dealers, strippers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yep. got at least some type of money to look like they got money. Mm-hmm. Money is not respected no more. I can't walk in the building and be like, yo, I make money. People are like, oh, right. okay, good for fucking you. So does everybody else in America. What's respected is the ambition and the consistency. Everybody looking for the sauce, sauce, sauce. How you get it? What's the secret? What's the secret? What's the secret consistency? Mm-hmm. That's it. I literally got to where I'm at because while everybody else was quitting and fake retiring, like 27 year olds talking about I'm retired, I kept going. You know, mm-hmm. so just know like God works in kind of like mysterious ways. He looks down on all of us and he's like, all right, I'm gonna put all y'all in the line. And basically, some people quit and go to the back of the line, not even knowing they was in the front. And then you move from the back to the front because motherfuckers was quitting that supposed to have been in front of you. So with anything, it's so easy to be like, this don't work and just stop. (laughs) We we were in a business. I I just started with the wrong person. Mm. He told me back then. You're in the same business, but with the right person. Now, no, 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 literally, this is a true story. We were, we were in, we were in a business. Like I said, you know, steer us in the wrong direction. I ain't gonna say put us in the wrong place. In the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. He told me back then I was on a call, on a conference call. I didn't know nothing about what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. I probably had like 225 people on the phone listening to what I had to say, and I didn't even know what I was talking about. Mm. After I was done talking, he said, yo, you got the sauce. Like, you can catch people's attention. If you knew what you was talking about, like, you could really affect change. Exactly. Like, like, not just get people on my team, make people money, but it was deeper than that. It was that like, you could really change people's lives. Not just make money for a moment, but change people's lives to where you can make money for a lifetime. Mm. I ain't listen. I swear to God, I ain't listen because, because again, I was with the wrong person. Mm. Had I met him, that we, 
No lie, wouldn't even be here right now. But because he had the, you know what? I, mean, I know David got it, but like he ain't making that choice. So let me just keep digging. Let me just keep digging. Exactly. Let me just keep digging until this nigga understand it. That I'm, we doing it regardless with you, without you. Guess what? I'm keep digging. I'm gonna keep digging. And then now I'm like, damn. If I would have joined you back then, <laughs> you would have been on. And I, I'll pick you back off that. So it's not even about so. Rich off the dad has has gotten to a place to where now all he has to do is invest in the right people, right? And that's Sheesh. all. That's, and but you know what? Like I always been the kid that grew up around the older dudes with money. They come through with all the money, and I will be like, if he got all the money, why he ain't put nobody on the right? Mm. And now that I'm older, it's like out of every hundred fuck boys you run across is one person. They want to know for boy real. Be a nigga with money. And the fuck boy could be a grandma. That's the <laughs> that's the worst yeah. part about it. Like it could be your own damn mama. You trying to put her on, yeah. and she fucking up the bag over and over and over right. and over and over. It could be your girlfriend, your brother, your cousin. So yeah, like that's you know that, and that's kind of what I was saying in the beginning. It's nothing like nowadays. Like you know, I, I'm sitting on a, a lovely business. Uh, that that we build, I got a lot of success stories. Humble, I've helped create over two hundred six figure earners. So it's it's nothing that I can get. It's all about hey, let me put you on so you can tag me on Facebook when you finally right. on and say I remember I was fucked up and. Rich came through my house and we had coffee. He, we talked for 30 minutes and he gave me some tips. And, and eight months no. later, let me, let me be honest. I'm he a said, six figure. I don't give a fuck if you join or not. That's what he told me. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we at his house. True story. At his house, he's like, yo, check it out. Listen. And you know me, I'm like, I'm peeping game. Like, yeah. This nigga right in his house. He's going to try to sell me up some. <laughs> Okay, let me go listen to this nigga got to say. That's my nigga. That's my yeah, nigga. Yeah, name. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I fuck with this nigga person. Business wise, we took the pad. Yeah. I walked to his house, kid you not. Imagine this. You walk into somebody's house. I got a, I got a crib. Fuck it. He got a crib. I, I put on pants. He put on pants. <laughs> we both believe. He put on fancy or shoes. You know what I mean? I walk in this nigga house. He tell me this. Most people like the herbal life niggas. Yeah. Like the, they like, man, you join this change of life. <laughs> Whatever gimmick they try to get you on. Right. <laughs> this disrespectful ass nigga told me. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you join or not. I'm gonna keep being me. <laughs> that's actually. That's actually. I say. I say. Wait. What? Facts. Look and 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 again, the African American in me. The ego in me. No, nigga, you need me. He, and like, he was like, he was in my head. Nigga, I don't need you. There you go. You, wait, you wait, know wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. It ain't got any words. Nigga, I just want my house cash, my car cash. I mean, shit. Really? Listen if it. you want to. I mean, <laughs> fuck it. You can hear what I got to say or don't. I'm going to be me. And it lit the blood. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Why after that? It was crazy. Wait. Hold on, wait. You know how that little fuck somebody head up like? Wait, nigga, did you just did you make me feel like a little kid? Oh, like, oh, you forgot to say I showed you a quarter million. Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> and, then, and then got online, got online, and was like, "Let me show you boys this that." I ain't gonna get too far into it, but it was like that went a quarter of a million dollars right there. Like, and I saw it. It was like zero, 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 <laughs> and it kept going. I'm like. This disrespectful nah, ass back. nigga, like he just <laughs> power the internet, everybody, man. Like, go get. Look, look, listen to psychology in this. He had a quarter of a million, not even in his bank account. It was just sitting there. Let Let me say this: when anytime when something hap- happened like that. It's one thing when you hear it. It's one thing. It's another thing when you stand in there looking at it. And you look at it like you say. Wait. You then it. Then you say, "Oh, this guy not just saying wait, wait, wait. the yeah, right it's things." Like, it's, it's he was two, like, it's "Why two, would I transfer it? Well, I, mean, I don't need to pay taxes right now. If I don't want to." It's two type of people. You know, everybody got them people scrolling down your face. 
and I just had to lay it. Like, you can order money off like, Amazon yeah, nigga, now. You work, you work ninety seven hours for that shit. No, it wasn't work. even that. It was just like, yo, bro, like. But that's what I felt like. like things is shit. things is different from six years ago, bro. Like, yeah, because <laughs> because my, because my mindset was so I was so stuck on. Damn, we got fucked over this old company. Damn, we got this. Damn, we got that. This nigga had a quarter of a million sitting in the account, not using it. That's terrible. They're like, they're like, you can get to the point where you so successful in life that you can order money online. You can order money. <laughs> if you want to, no, 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 if you want to, no, no, no. If you want to stun on Instagram, they got where you can order money. <laughs> well, no, it's crazy. Using no, this was no Instagram shit, dog. It was crazy. Come on, is gonna have to email me. <laughs> right. So, so I'm gonna say this. We're gonna get ready to wrap it up. I'm gonna let that say Wild Child go ahead and drop them uh, shout outs. We're gonna let our guests drop the shout outs last because someone tells me they're gonna drop gospel along with the yeah, shout outs. Definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, so wait, wait, wait. See Murph, I love you, bro. He probably be in here uh, standing next to you, making sure you play that shit. We get middle and after. <laughs> it's coming on right at the end. <laughs> That, that's that's our nigga. outro. That's my nigga. I swear to God, I love Seabird. That's my nigga. Exactly. Yeah. Talk about it. Definitely. Uh, and I'm going to piggyback off that, too. Seabird definitely gets a shout out. I've been knowing him for years. I know him grinding for years. And um, he's doing these. He's, it's a movement. And if you ain't a part of the movement, then what are you really doing in regards to not knowing the music? In regards to um, music that you need to hear. Mm. Um, the feel good music that. Uh, you can pull your britches off. That banger. <laughs> so any any parts of the music industry, he can get it. I want to give a shout out to him. I would definitely want to give a shout out to our guest. Thank you. Um, thank you. The Anthony Singh thank here. You, um, Rich off the net. Appreciate uh, it. We definitely uh definitely appreciate y'all dropping that knowledge here because a lot of not, a lot of people that nigga look confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, you ready? No, I'm not confused. Like, 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 you got a new outlook. Like, yeah, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm just, I'm just Something ready. was in his cup no, as well. I'm saying you're confused. You're never confused. You're oh, you're definitely. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's what I look like. That's my nigga, nigga. That's how hey, he does, my nigga. He's mad because you need to sit in the sun a little bit. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. That's a fact. Nestle's. Shout out to Nestle's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, we appreciate y'all dropping the knowledge. Um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, gold mm-hmm. that said today. I don't even call it gem. I call it gold. It's beyond the gym. It's beyond that. Living my life like it's golden. <laughs> <laughs> so, all that saying is, if you if you listen to this episode at the end of the day, get beyond yourself. As the rich off the net said, you got to get beyond yourself to make it mm-hmm. to the next level. Um, obviously everything that you were doing at this point is actually not working. Let's get with the facts. So what it is, it's not working. So, um, get beyond yourself to make it to the next level. Um, if everybody has offspring in the building, we want to shout out to the offspring. Um, definitely want to keep them apart because that's actually what it is. We're trying to build that legacy. At the end of the day, we're trying to build a legacy. Exactly. Uh, live the life you love, love the life you live. And if you ain't doing either one of those, then, uh, change. Exactly. Just keep How can they reach you, S.A. Wildchild? Uh, S.A. Wildchild at gmail.com. That's S.A. Wildchild at gmail.com. Instagram, S.A. Wildchild 210. And uh, just come to the Velvet Vibes group. There's always laughter, live, and love. If you need a break from your life, um, just come to the group and look at what. Argue with us. Love to get live about, man. We have fun in there. So if you just need a break, just come to the Facebook page, Velvet Vibes Filmcast. We, we definitely have some fun in there. Boom. I'm going to drop mine here. Yeah, you just heard the SA Wild Child. You got the Velvet Juggernaut in this motherfucker, as you always do. Uh, I definitely want to make sure to get a shout out to the guests. Time to exhale in this bitch. Uh, we've been waiting to exhale. <sighs> definitely want to make sure to get a shout out to Lynn Napoli and Air Horn. <laughs> definitely want to make sure to get a shout out to. The Scorpion King. Get over here! Uh, definitely want to make sure to get a shout out to. Uh, 
all of the offspring in the building. Uh, definitely want to make sure to give a shout out to the whiskey in my system that's got me doing a lot of dances because I've got to urinate. Uh, I'm trying to hold, I'm trying to hold that urination because I want to make sure that you hear us out to the end. And with that being said, I definitely want to make sure to give a shout out to the Valley Cookie Company. Definitely want to give a shout out to all the sweet potatoes I'll be eating on next week. <laughs> and with that being percent velvet at gmail.com as far as email percent symbol in my email one zero zero percent spelled out facebook come argue with us it's all love uh, you want to hit me up on instagram it's velvet vibe pimp cast all together no spaces no underscores no strange spelling velvet vibes uh, if you consider a Z at the end of vibes, then I guess that is a strange spelling. <laughs> Velvet Vibes, <laughs> Pimp Cass. Uh, hit me up on Instagram. Make sure to check us out. And we definitely want to drop a bomb for the guests because they just dropped a bomb. I'm going to pass it to Dr. Ooh. David Singh. Drop some gospel on him. Who needs uh, a shout out? That's that's my heart. But, uh, you know, I just, I, like I said, I, I don't need no shout outs. I'm not here to, 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 to try to solidify anything. I just want everybody to change their mindset, Doc. That's it, man. I'm just trying to make sure that everybody affects change. And if they don't do anything else, don't start a business. Don't do it. Just change your mindset. Change. Make sure you take your life to where it want to be instead of letting them take your life to where it is. And if anybody want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? On the on the IG is D Anthony Singh. Uh, on the on the on the uh, Instagram is the same thing. All my handles are the same. Like everybody know me. Like I'm not here. To Make sure to get a proper spelling on that. It's D A N T H N O Y O N Y D A N T H. He's had a beverage or two. S I N G H D Anthony Singh. Hit me, Doc. You made ripping up money. money over here. Look, if you don't follow me, just follow Rich off the net. That's all I need. I just, I'm just trying to be like that man right there, Doc. Talk about it, Rich off the net. Who need a shout out from you, and how can I get in contact with you? Um. Well, I ain't really doing no shout outs, you know, shout out to everybody chasing their dreams. There you go. Uh, like I said, going to sleep, looking at that silver fan saying tomorrow I'm going to kick tomorrow's fucking ass. Oh. So shout out to all of y'all. Uh, shout out to everybody that, you know, listened to the podcast tonight. I definitely want to shout y'all out for having us. I appreciate uh, Velvet Vibes, you know what I'm saying? We in here. So, uh, but I really just want to shout out to all the upcoming entrepreneurs that's you know, seeing at their computer desk and seeing in their office, you know, fighting their computer, punching the walls. <laughs> yeah. That is the real life. Asking yeah. they self, why it's not working for them. Yeah, just keep pushing, you know, keep your head. Your why, why you got started. And always mm-hmm. remember that, you know, what your goal is and your goal is not going to come overnight. So stop looking for results every day and start looking for it quarterly results mm. you know start looking what are am i better in three months am i, am I better than the last six months the last mm-hmm. 12 months start looking at business that way uh if you want to get in contact with me my handle is rich off the net on instagram twitter rich off the net um facebook rich off the net gary roberts uh yeah i'll be sliding down your timeline Real soon. <laughs> you probably already have seen me slide in there. You just ain't woke. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so let's get it, man. We out here. With that being said, uh, stay woke. As a, woke. As a wise man. They be creeping. <laughs> they gon' find ya. <laughs> ah! Yeah, you know I gotta urinate. I'm I'm doing some str- I'm doing some I'm doing some strange movements. Y'all better be glad this is audio only. Um, with that being said, we're gonna take y'all out with C Murph. Uh, if you want to Millie Rock, go ahead and do so. If you want to go ahead, if you want to go ahead and twerk, make sure you do so. Uh, C Murph, Jezebel, take us out, this bitch. Fucking girl, do it your way. On a party on a birthday, she wanna pop a little pilly on a birthday. Shake her ass and make it rain for a birthday. Pop a bottle in the rain for a birthday. She wanna pump a little cocoa on a birthday. Pop a pussy.
be on a dick for a birthday. She said she might kiss a bitch on a birthday. She said she down to do whatever on a birthday. What? Yeah, let the shots, let the freak out. Tonight the night for you to open up and let it out. Let it out. Get your freak on, freak on. Break your body like a strip and getting rained on. 